Today we'll be finally getting started on their long-awaited project, Tower Defense Game. We're going to get started with the first two most important steps, setting up our project and getting our assets into our editor. But let's just start with the assets first. We're going to be using assets from one of my favorite asset sites, Kenny.nl. So let's open up the browser and figure out what we actually want to use. Now I already have the page open. Just go to the link. The link will be in the description for the website and more than likely the asset pack itself that we plan on using. But what we're going to do here is we're going to get click the get free assets button and we're just going to have a good search. Now, if you're making a game of any kind, this website has just so many different types of assets and it has a really, really fun thing specifically for tower defense games. So if I just type tower defense and spell that correctly, there we go. You have a tower defense kit, which is a 3D kit. You have a top down tower defense and a tower defense normal, which is um, like 2.5D kind of style, which looks really good. Now we're actually going to be using both of these. But first we're going to start off with just this one, just the basic tower defense top down uh, package. So let's just take a look into this. Uh, click on the picture and we'll see what we've actually got. We've got a bunch of floor tiles. We've got some interesting tiles over here. We've got some, what looks like some highlight tiles, which is really nice. We've got some effects, enemies, towers, and turrets. And we've got some basic like numbering and lettering, which is really, really nice. Now we can get a general look about how it looks like this, or we can come back to this picture and get a better look. So we know what we want to use, right? We have our asset pack. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to download it. Let's click download. Uh, donate if you want to donate. I recommend it. I have myself. It is just useful. It is amazing. They, they provide so much. Now that you've downloaded it, you get all of their socials. You can go to all those and follow them. Uh, now that we have our asset pack, though, let's open it up. No, I opened up on my other screen. There we go. And I'm going to close out of my Chrome for now. And we want to extract this to a folder that we can find easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my asset folder here, which is on my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to just call this the tower defense, defense. I can't spell today. When can I ever spell tower defense assets? And I'm going to extract all of this into that folder. Grand. We now have our assets in a place that you know, we can easily find them. As I said, mine are on my desktop. Make sure they are in a place that you can find easily. You don't want to have to be rooting through your whole computer to try and figure out where you put them. So just, I, you know, just slam them on your desktop. So now we have our assets. Let's actually go and open up Godot. Now I'm going to be using Godot for version 4.3. Uh, this is 4.3 stable official. So if you are on a previous version, some of the things actually a lot of certain things will not work for you, so try to update to the most re uh, recent version. And I don't know if things will change that drastically in the future, so it, this will probably still function well on a later version of Godot. Now you can see here I've uh, got a lot of tower defense specific things <laughs> I've been uh, fiddling away with. So let's create a new project. Now let's, I'm going to use this project file here, or this uh, folder on my desktop for my projects. So I'm just going to control C to copy that and I can just paste that in here and it will be on my desktop. Now, if you want to, you know, browse and find your own place for it, feel free to do so. Take your time in doing so. Once again, put it in a place that you know you can get to easily. But now let's go and name this. I'm going to name this the tower defense uh, tutorial because it's kind of what this is, is a tutorial. I'm going to be using the forward plus renderer and I'm going to use version control metadata for Git. Now we'll get into that in a little bit or probably a different video about why we're going to be doing that. Now I'm going to hit create and edit. All right, with our project open, we're going to want to kind of get a few things sorted first. Now the editor can be rearranged to how you choose and like. When I usually make videos, I don't tend to go to my normal, like how I usually set this up. So I'm going to leave this like this. Uh, if you want to actually modify things and how they're set, you can click the three little dots here and you can change the dock position of each individual node. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our project, project settings. We're going to go down into window and we're going to modify some of these settings. Now, if you turn on advanced, you get a lot more settings to mess around with. Now, the viewport width and viewport height, very kind of specific. I'm going to leave this 
as it is because this is what it's got basically going to be working for for us right so the window width and height override is what we're going to want to be using in the future for the actual game when we plan on releasing it but for now viewport height and width can just stay like this next most important thing is the stretch mode so we're going to be using it's not really pixel art but it's small enough to be considered so we're going to be uh, changing the mode not to canvas but to viewport we want it to be able to scale correctly with the current viewport we are using we'll get more into that as we go and i'm going to keep the aspect on keep and that's it that is the really really, really simple project setup that we want to do now if this is your first time opening though you're going to have a lot of other things that you can mess around with uh, to fix that we're going to go into the editor so click this little button up here editor editor features now i have a profile here for 2d current uh, all this is is all, all i've done here is i've disabled the 3d editor disabled the asset library the history doc because i don't use the history doc and if i scroll all the way well, let's not even scroll let's just collapse some folders here if i scroll down i have also disabled the 3d nodes this just makes it you know so i only find the things that I want to find and I don't find the stuff that I just won't ever use. You can do the same thing with the multiplayer stuff if you really want to. Uh, audio if you don't plan on using audio in your game, which would be a bit odd, but you know, some people, you know, some people like to go audioless. I know my partner likes to play games without audio, so <laughs> makes my life easy if I ever make something for her to play. But yes, uh, with those disabled and uh, the profile set to current, You'll see that now you only have just the 2D and the script buttons up here instead of 2D, 3D, asset library, and a bunch of other things. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up some basic file structure things. To do that, we're going to right-click on the res folder here in the file system, then hit create, create a new folder, and the first folder we create will be uh, scenes. No capitalization to make it easier to find. And then we're going to do another folder inside of res again, this is just going to be for assets. Now inside the assets folder, I'm going to create another new folder and I'm going to call this tile sets. Actually, we'll just call it tiles. So this is what the folder should look like. Now we're gonna do something uh, fun that I kind of uh, found out a little while ago and I've been really enjoying using this. We're going to right click on the res folder we're going to open in file manager. This pulls us to the root of our project inside of our file manager. So inside of Godot projects, so if I actually go to my desktop here, go to Godot projects, and then I have a look, we have our project here. Looks like I made a small mistake when I was creating the project. I forgot to create a new folder. So uh, we're going to do that very quickly by one, closing out what we currently have, I'm going to save and quit as I mess everything up. There we go. I'm going to save and quit, just in case you've made this mistake. I'm going to go into the projects folder that I saved the uh, folder in, or save the game in. I'm going to create a new folder inside of it. I'm going to call it Tower Defense Tutorial. No capital. This is uh, coding with other languages kicking in. There we go. That is how we're going to name it. Tower underscore defense underscore tutorial. Now I'm just going to highlight all of these and control click on the rest and I'm just going to drag them inside of the tower defense tutorial folder. That way anytime I go into my projects folder, my actual projects are all separated. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit scan. I'm going to go and scan that specific folder. So to do that, I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go to my desktop, which should be not here somewhere. So it should be in the users under my username. And then I should be able to scroll down to downloads desktop, go into my Godot projects folder, and I'm going to hit scan that current folder and it will pop up with the tower defense tutorial. Now I can reopen that. Now that that little mistake is fixed, now with the mistake fixed, we can go back into the root of our project by clicking on res and going into uh, open file directory. Now we have our project here. We're going to do a new folder inside of this project and we're going to just call this the downloads folder. Downloads, there we go, downloads folder. Inside of that folder, we're going to make a new text document. 
and we're going to rename the entire thing, including the extension. Right? So we're going to delete everything, including the extension, and we're just going to write dot gd ignore. It's going to give you a little warning, ask if you want, you sure you want to change it. We're going to hit yes, and that will turn into a dot gd ignore file, and that's going to do something really, really cool. First, if you don't see extensions, you can go to your view and go to show here and I'm pretty sure you get yeah, you can enable file extensions here so you can start renaming those a bit easier but with that done we can do something really cool let's go back to our Godot assets folder let me uh, do this there we go so Godot assets on the right download folder on the left we're going to copy the assets that we just downloaded we're going to paste them into the downloads folder now that's going to do something really cool, right? Because what it usually would do is if we go to our Godot, it would populate the folder and create the new downloads folder. But as you can see, there's no downloads folder here. Even if I close out Godot, relaunch it, and go back into it, you'll see that there is no downloads folder. And that is what that .gdignore extension is doing. It's basically saying, Godot, ignore this folder and every file inside of it. Now you're probably wondering, why would I want to do that with all of my assets? Well, this allows us to have proper asset control without actually going into multiple separate files, right? It could all be held within the Godot uh, project that we're doing, but we're controlling what's actually being used, which is really nice. So what I can do here is I can now go into downloads, go into my assets, and I can move this over a little bit. There we go. I can go into my tile sheets and I can drag over one tile sheet. I could drag over the actual PNGs themselves, which we'll be using. Uh, so, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open up the Godot project, go into Tower Defense, go into my assets folder, into tiles, and I'm going to just pull in that tile sheet. Uh, we're going to be using tile sheet one here. I'm just going to pull that across, move that in. I can now close these folders. As you can see, a little pop-up box there just said it was importing. And now I have my asset sheet inside of Godot. Now let's zoom in a little bit. And if we zoom all the way in, you can see that there is some uh, blurriness to this, right? So let's, let's fix that as the next thing. Let's go to our project settings. Let's go all the way down into was it into do, 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 rendering and we want 2d you want 2d rendering no we want to go into rendering and we want to go into textures and where it says here default texture filter we want to change that to nearest now i'm going to click close and you can see now it's not blurry yes we still have like the pixelization on the edges which is kind of fine but it's not blurry anymore so this looks a lot more crisp and sharp now i'm going to delete this because we don't need it anymore I'm going to create a new 2D scene. I'm going to call this new 2D scene main with a capital. I'm going to hit control S and save, and it's going to ask us where to save it. I'm going to save it inside of scenes, new folder. I'm going to call that new folder main, and I'm going to save that in there. Now, that is our project set up very quickly and simply. But also, we now have everything we need, and we have asset management just straight off the bat. So, really, really useful. Uh, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. I'm going to try and make these videos a lot shorter than my usual hour long uh, <laughs> videos because I want to make this kind of concise. I want to be able to actually teach you what you need to learn in that specific video. That way you can come back to it and know exactly what you're going to learn in that video, which is just, I think, going to be a better idea. Uh, after this, we're going to actually start building things out. We're going to go over an entire prototyping kind of flowchart asset thing that I've got that I want to show off. Uh, which should help you kind of explain what or well, understand what we're going to be going through what we're going to be creating and why we're going to be creating it in the way that we're creating it it'll also help you see the connections between how we manage certain types of resources but that is all for today thank you for watching i hope you're having a good day and a great game dev journey uh if you enjoy the video if you want to see more make sure to like uh, subscribe if you have any issues please come down to the discord uh, i'm usually pr pretty active there as is uh most of the community it's kind of an amazing place if you need assistance uh yeah but yeah i'll see you in the next video